Here's another game it's unlikely you've ever heard of before, Boku wa Chisai on PlayStation 2. It was released in 2002 by Victor Entertainment and directed by Sotoru Honda, who previously directed KO Flying Squadron 2 as well as writing the first one. It's a 3D platformer but with several twists, both temporal and spatial. Speaking of space, sort of, the game begins on a spaceship as you get briefed by the leader of your space patrol group. They have located the infamous space pirate Silver. He's hiding on Earth and they assemble to go after him and arrest him. You play as Pom, or the Reddit logo guy, who is new to the team and as such doesn't get to join the mission. But after your robotic partner picks up an SOS signal, you hop into a ship of your own anyway and go down to the planet to help them. On the way however you're shot down and you crash land, without breaking anything, into the storage room of the Yuki family of Japan. The first team member is stranded in the same room as you, so you rescue him and get a basic tutorial in the process. Using the info chip you received from your teammate, you learn that Silver is in the living room. So Pom goes there, but is horrified to learn that Silver has placed time bombs all over the house. They try to find them, but there's no time, and... But instead of dying, you get trapped in a time loop. You get sent back to 6 o'clock the previous day, and after one hour you get sent back again. One hour in-game takes 12 minutes of real time. From most of the Space Patrol members you rescue, however, you get a time crystal, which extends your time by one hour until you can get back to 5 o'clock, defuse the bombs and defeat Silver once and for all. A daunting task, especially since you are, as the title says, small. Pom is 5 centimeters tall, about the size of a pack of cigarettes, as the back of the box shows. Strange that a kid's game would make that comparison, but okay. As Pom, all you can really do is run, jump and climb, but he does have the ability to copy the form of others, and some of the patrol members you rescue you can turn into. Then when you rescue another of the same kind, that form's ability is upgraded. These are the forms. Mukki men. Strong, can punch enemies and climb between flat surfaces. Pukumen. Fat and or inflated, this form can float through the air. Elekimen. Can electrocute enemies and fast travel between power outlets. Hittomen. A tank that can shoot enemies in third or first person. Nyokimen. Can stretch and grab ledges with its arms, which can also be used to attack with. Bashamen. Can swim and fast travel between sinks. Ridermen. A bike that rides through enemies if done fast, and you can press the action button to honk. Pattamen can hang glide through the air. Pitchymen can eavesdrop on telephone conversations. Not needed for completion. At the start of the game you can only hold one transformation, but you upgrade this too as the game proceeds. L2 and R2 cycles through forms and triangle activates it, although you have to stand still to do so. Square and circle are both used as the action button, X jumps and R1 looks in first person. Combat is not a big part of the game really. The enemies are sort of randomly placed, except for the turtle looking ones with flat backs. These are used to bounce from using Pokemon. It's more about exploring and the puzzle element of the platforming. How to get where you want to go. Someone that helps you go where you want to go is the hamster taxi, who agrees to chauffeur you around the house after you rescue him from a mousetrap. You still have to pay him in seeds however, and these are one of the two items that are strewn all over, along with energy drops. The energy drops are needed for jumping to a specific hour, using the arrow squares on the floor to run, shooting the Hitoman gun, and other things that cost energy. But if you leave a room and come back, or travel in time, they regenerate. So it's never a problem really. 
only slightly tedious at worst. There are three boss fights with Silver spread out through the game Super Mario 64 style. Neither is that taxing gameplay wise, but if you have trouble you can buy food items from the hamster shops, as well as an item that works as a fairy in Zelda, reviving you when you die. One odd but fun thing is that because of the Space Culture Non-Aggression Treaty, enemies will disappear as soon as humans enter a room, and the game will on the same basis censor itself if you happen to be in the same room as anyone changing clothes or going to the bathroom. Unless the game glitches, that is. Speaking of glitches, maybe it's because the game is on a CD or just a programming error, but you can only listen to so much dialogue before it goes away until you restart. About an hour's worth, I think. That happened to me during the ending, but at least the subtitles still worked. Though you have to reactivate them every time you restart the game. It doesn't save the setting for some reason. There are collectibles of sorts in the info ships, of which there are 100 as well as upgrades to your health, jump ability and speed to find. There are more hamsters than the taxi one. They have their own lives in the house. But the hamsters are not the only ones living in the house, of course. Honestly, if all this game was was running around finding your fellow putchy men and using their forms to find more while defeating enemies along the way, I would have been fine with that. But there is a full family of people living here as well, and they have their own storylines of sorts going on during these 24 hours. The father, Shinichi, is an author of kids' books who is trying to finish his new book on time, and the mother, Ai, isn't fully your typical housewife, at least not today. There's the daughter, Ruri, who is on another one of her diets, and the son, Takuya, who is trying to take care of a frog without his parents noticing. And it's not just the family either. Today there's the criminal snake brothers, Aka and Ao, and the time police, Ichiro, who hunts them, unaware that they're in fact working for Silver, the space pirate. Their lives this day happens in the background as you run around trying to save your friends, but if you find and activate the cameras dotted around the house, you can watch what they do from your flying saucer, your PFO. Papa is trying to finish his new Space Boy installment, but progress is slow and he keeps getting interrupted. Just before 8, there's a power outage. So he sits down in the kitchen with the kids telling ghost stories. The power comes back and he returns to work, only to find that his hard drive has crashed, so he has to start over. He gets an extension on his deadline from work, but then Rudy comes with bad news. It's her turn to cook breakfast. やれやれ。he gets back to riding and gets a good idea finally. Mama, who had been out visiting her parents, comes back and he notices that her wedding ring is gone from her hand. He works deep into the night when he's called by a reporter who wants to interview him. So he heads out into town to partake, but returns 5 in the morning disappointed that he was tricked. There was no interview. Rudy comes by at 8 o'clock with breakfast, and although he tries not to, he has to eat out of politeness, and passes out. Two hours later, Mama wakes him up and he has to make a beeline for the bathroom. He has to be there for a while, so he takes his laptop with him, eventually finishing both the book and his business there. 
After sending his work to his superiors, he phones his wife's parents, who tells him that she never came by last night, which makes him confused. More so when coupled with hearing on the radio that there was a break-in at the museum last night and that they found a ring with their initials on it. He goes to talk to Mama about it. Mama. The day starts out ordinary with her worrying over bills and making dinner. But during the power outage, she gets a call from her friend, who tells her that their old middle school is getting demolished. This concerns her, because back during her school days, she buried a time capsule on the grounds containing an old dojinshi she made, and she doesn't want that to be unearthed by anyone. She tells the kids that she's going to visit her parents, but instead she changes into some kind of ninja outfit and leaves through the window. After she comes back, Papa notices her ring is missing, which she herself hadn't noticed. She takes a bath and talks to Papa again, who asks if she wants to come along to the Italian Renaissance exhibit at the museum. Mama goes to bed, but sets the alarm to wake up ahead of Rudy to make an edible breakfast. However, during the night the Snake Brothers break in to set time bombs, and despite them setting off the alarm by mistake in waking her up, she doesn't see them in the dark. Those bombs, by the way, you have to defuse before you can beat the game. And you have to defuse them in order, by color. There are nine of them, and the clue is billiards. The alarm is then off and she oversleeps, meeting Rudy in the kitchen when it's too late. After another nap, they go to have breakfast, but find that the food has been stolen, much to Mama and Takuya's relief. <laughs> At two in the afternoon, she's once more caught by Papa looking in her suitcase, considering destroying the evidence. Papa had been suspecting that Mama was involved in a theft at the museum for money, but she was just there retrieving her old embarrassing fan manga. Also to get a camera from the time capsule that she could sell for extra money, which she makes into the main story, more or less to not have to tell him about the manga. As she heads to the kitchen, she sees a suddenly quite fatter Rudy, and wonders as she goes out shopping if Rudy doesn't need that diet after all. When she comes back, she's met in the kitchen by the real Rudy, and wonders how she lost weight so fast. <laughs> Mama's day ends in the kitchen. She is the kitchen mama, after all. Rudy is sitting in her room getting called by someone who doesn't say anything. But then something even weirder happens, as a wormhole is opened above, and in comes a time machine and a time police officer, who tries to wave his own existence off as nothing special, but is compelled to talk. The time police, Ichiro, who gets the nickname Isan, tells her that he's chasing the criminals Aka and Ao, the Snake Brothers, who have stolen a time machine. During the conversation, Takuya walks in, and now he's in on the mission too, which they have to attempt to accomplish without mom and dad finding out. Isan tells a story about how in the future the first time machine wasn't invented but found when the power goes out. They scramble, but a bit too fast, and knock each other out as they fumble in the dark. Rudy is woken up by Papa shortly after, who luckily doesn't see Isan. Later, after Isan comes back after giving the Snake Brothers a good chasing, he and Rudy talk about her young love life concerning Nao and Kusanagi-kun. Later still, Rudy makes Isan some food which he happily bites into, but unfortunately this does little to help his mission as he passes out for several hours. When Isan finally wakes up, 
he needs to go to the bathroom, bad. On the way he runs into Owl, but the chase will have to wait. Later in the day, Isan goes looking for Rudy in Takuya's room, but only finds Akka, who uses poorly fitting clothes and his master mimicry to fool him long enough to get the information he needs. Ao then jumps down from his hiding spot and fights Isan. The Snake Brothers tie him up and leave him on Takuya's bed where he stays until Takuya comes to his rescue later. The Snake Brothers spend the day running from Isan, getting orders from Silver, setting bombs, tricking Papa, using the bathroom, sneaking around and more. They try to find a way to escape and decide to steal Isan's time machine but don't know that he sent it into the future as a way of hiding it and they get it on top of their heads at the end of the day, incapacitating them. Takuya's day is perhaps the least interesting. His main plotline is that he found a frog that he's taking care of without anyone knowing, and that his birthday is tomorrow. Overall, the story going on in the background is silly and likeable, but there's also an underlying riddle going on, as there are some hints dropped at who Isan really is, and honestly I'm not quite sure myself. He's either Kusanagi-kun or Rudy's son maybe? He says at one point that he has some memory of eating food like hers before. Bokuwachisa is one of those games that is so inventive that it was always destined to be a niche game. But it's a niche that I like a lot. It reminds me of Chibi Robo in a lot of ways, although you don't directly interact with the family. The main flaw of the game is that you can't use the right stick to move the camera, except when you're watching the cameras. Also the enemies get kind of annoying to deal with as the game goes on, but that's mostly because they feel like they get in the way of the exploring. The game sold well enough in Japan to get a Best Collection re-release by Marvelous, who by then had bought out Victor, but it was never localized for the West, which is a shame. It's honestly less quirky than Chibi Robo, and it is on the PlayStation 2, so it had the potential audience. Maybe. But as it stands, I'm honestly not sure if I'm the only non-Japanese person who's ever played Boku wa Chisai. Am I? I hope not. Well, in any case, Boku wa Chisai is one of my new favorite games. Thank you.